Hi everyone, this is the second part of my JavaScript Blue Planet tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we'll be creating an animated star field. So if you recall, this is currently what the code does. It draws a blue planet with a halo. And we want to create some stars that go zooming past it in the background. So first things first, let's, let's create a constant called numStars. How many stars are we going to have? Let's just start with 10 for argument's sake. Now how are we going to store these stars? Well probably a good way is just to store them in an array. So make a variable, an array called stars. It can just be a blank, uh, an empty array to begin with. And how about each star? What will it be comprised of? Well, there's going to be multiple properties, aren't there? So a JavaScript object would be an awesome way to handle that. So we can create um, create each star object. So for var i equals zero, we'll just loop over a number of times equal to the number of stars. So i equals num i is less than the number of stars. I plus plus. Um, now to create a star object, so first of all, we're going to assign to each element of the array. And an object is just created by using braces and then naming each uh, property. So an object is essentially an array just with named properties. So what do we need to know about our stars? Well, we need to know their size, don't we? We're going to have a random size, assumably. So let's call that a radius. Radius colon will equal what? Well, let's use random. Math random. So random creates a value between 0 and 1, not including 1, times, you can modify this to suit, but let's say 1.5, comma. So that's one property. Now, they'll need a position, so an x and y coordinate. Now, the x and y coordinate will again be randomly positioned on the screen. Math random times, it could be up to the canvas width, couldn't it? Canvas width plus one, because it's zero, we don't want to include zero. Well, maybe we could, doesn't really matter, it's random anyway. We'll use floor for this, we'll give it an exact coordinate an integer coordinate, math random times canvas width plus one. Good. Y, the Y position will be similar, except that we'll be using the height, which is the same in this example, but that's okay, it could be different. What else do we need to know? We also need to know the X velocity and the y velocity. So there will be five properties of each star, a radius, xy coordinate, and the xy velocity. We should probably give a set of constant um, called, say, star speed. We'll assume that all stars travel with a, well, the same base speed. Let's call this a base speed. So we'll, we'll leave a comment here. Uh, base speed of stars in pixels per second. Okay, five pixels per second, that's probably a relatively good speed. Right, we also need to determine direction, because remember velocity is made up of a speed and a direction. Now, if you think about it realistically, stars tend to travel in the same direction throughout the night because it's all relative to the Earth. So we'll create, say, two variables here called the x velocity. So this will be equal to the speed, the star speed, times by a random direction. So we'll just assume that uh, there's a 50% chance that um, it could travel in a positive direction and a 50% chance it could travel in a negative. So to do that, you can just go math random is greater than or equal to 0.5, because 50% chance of both. If it is, it's a positive. If it isn't, it'll be in a negative direction. Do the same sort of thing for the y velocity. 
Um, yeah, sounds good. Now we don't want them moving at exactly the same speed because obviously the stars that we see are in relative, I mean, they'd be in different positions in the universe, wouldn't they? So uh, we want random sort of, we can create a variable here, I think, called a random multiplier or something. We'll call it a speed multiplier. It'll just be a random value. Uh, you can set a value. I'll say it can be up to say three times as fast or four times as fast. We'll add one to it so it doesn't get 0.1 or whatever. Yeah, so a random multiplier. So the x velocity will equal the, so yes, the xv will equal the x velocity times by the multiplier, speed multiplier. Now, remembering xv will have to be in frames per second, so we'll have to divide that by f the frames per second. Because currently it's in, uh, currently it is in pixels per second because of our, uh, our definition here. I mean, you could technically label all these number of stars in the star field to be concise to be clear. Now the y velocity is going to be the same sort of thing, y velocity times the speed multiplier, which is just a random, divide by FPS. The reason we want to use the same speed multiplier here is so that they travel in the same direction. If we had times two here but only times one here, then it would be on a different angle, it would look quite funny. Again you could have all of this in completely random directions. But if you did that, then there'd be stars flying all over the place, which maybe wouldn't be so nice, I don't think. <laughs> it wouldn't look very realistic, I don't think. And I think that's all we have to do for creating our stars. The next step is to set up an interval because we want to do some uh, animation. So there's a built-in function, set interval. You have to assign a handler, which is just going to be a function name, and how often it's called. It's in milliseconds, so 1000 milliseconds divided by our frame rate, frames per second. Do we have a frames per second? Well, I better add that. Constant frames per second will equal 30. F frames per second. There we go. So this will work now. Uh, we have this, that'll work. It'll call the update function every 1 30th of a second. Let's create that now. Function update. It'll call this every 1 30th of a second. Now we want to do all our drawing in our update function. It'll cause issues if we don't do that. So just tap that. Delete some of this black space or white space. Uh, right, so we'll do our background first, that's good. And here is where we'll want to loop over our stars array. So we'll just use a for loop again, var i equals zero, i is less than the number of stars, i plus plus. First thing we want to do is draw e draw the star, draw the star. It's going to be a small circle, so we can just copy what we've done here with drawing the halo or the planet or whatever. The fill style is going to be, well, I'm going to set this one to white. You could make random colors or whatever, but I'm going to make all our stars white. We don't need to do this every time on each iteration, we can just do this once because all stars are going to be the same color. So we'll begin a path, we'll do an arc. I'll do all this again because that's not going to work. So we're going to have an arc. Um, it's going to be based on the this array, isn't it? It's going to be based on this array. I'm going to use those properties to draw the star. So the arc will be, so the x position will be the stars i dot x position. The y position will be the stars i dot y. So that's how you call a property 
of an of a JavaScript object. You just go dot whatever. The radius, same sort of thing. Radius, these are just the things that we named them as. The start angle will be zero. This end angle will be what we want to circle, so we have to use math pi because it's in radians. Math pi times two radians, 360 degrees. Uh, whether it's anti-clockwise or not, doesn't matter. Fill. So it'll draw the star at the random position that it's determined up here. Shall we try that? Okay, there's one star. There's another star. Some of them will be appearing behind the planet, remember. To test this further, how about we bump up the number of stars. So number of stars will equal 100. Actually, let's make it 100 is okay. Okay, there's some more stars. Yep, there seems to be, there must be a lot behind the planet, I guess. There's a little uh, constellation. That looks pretty cool. Okay. To get them moving, however, we'll have to do something else. So this is just drawing them. We're not updating anything here, are we? So update its position. So simply, we just need to go stars i dot x plus equals the stars i dot x velocity, right? And we can do the same thing for the y. Now I immediately see an issue here. Can you think what that might be? Let's have a look. So the stars are moving in a, ran in a randomly determined direction. They're moving at different speeds because of that multiplier we had. But they're zooming off the top left of the screen and they're not coming back, are they? We want them to cycle around. There's some that are left behind the planet, so that's why we keep seeing some. But ultimately they keep going off the left and never come back. They're not re they're not what ideally what we'd want is that star to go off the top there and then pop back onto the bottom or whatever, just to, so that the stars keep cycling through. So to do that, we can just add some conditions here. So if if um, star uh, stars i x is less than zero, so I mean it's, it's gone off the left of the screen. Gone off left of screen. What do we want to do? Well, we want to reposition it, I guess. Reposition it to the right of screen. Right of screen. Okay, so we can just go stars i dot x will plus equals the canvas width. Can you see why? So for example, so if it's less than zero, for example, it's minus five, well, we want to add 500 to it. So if minus five plus 500 is 495, so it essentially makes it immediately go to the other side of the screen, making it look like it's looping around. You wouldn't even notice that, honestly, because it'll just be, there'll be hundreds of stars on the screen, so it's not gonna make be a big problem. Similarly, else if, uh, stars i dot x is off the right of the screen. Canvas dot width. So if it's greater than the width of the canvas, so this means it's um, gone off the right of screen. What do we want to do? We want to reposition it to the left of the to the left of the screen. Okay, so it's going to be very similar to this. What do you think we might do here? We just need to make it a subtraction instead, don't we? So if it's gone off the right of the screen, so say it's 503, we want to subtract the width away. So 503 minus 500 is 3, so it'll go back to the left of the screen. Uh, and we need to do a similar thing to, so update its x position, and this will be update its right, no, right, its y position. So I'll just paste all that down there. We just need to change x to y, y 
y oh y am I changing x to y and instead of width we'll use height 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 hopefully that will do it let's have a look ding okay I can see one more issue uh, it looks like they're looping back which is good but I see that the halo it's solid it's an opaque color so we can fix that by going down to our, our halo see that we've got halo gradient is dodger blue and then black what we want instead of black we want transparent that was good enough for a static image but for a trans sorry for an animated uh, image we want it to be transparent so let's try that see what it looks like uh, looking good except that the halo is basically too transparent now it's completely transparent I don't think it's completely transparent I think it's just that the inner radius is too small so if we look uh, the gradient inner radius which is this part here so if you hover over that there's a the first radius is that zero we don't want that to be zero we want that to be higher so let's pick a number um, canvas width times I'm just taking a guess, say 3.5. We'll put that one back up to 0.5. Let's give that a go. Whoa, <laughs> it's very much glowing, isn't it? So the inner radius I would suggest is too big. So we'll put that down to 2.5. Ah, that's looking nicer. Great. So you can go ahead and download this code and modify it to your heart's desire. We'll just do a bit of playing now. So just say we update the number of stars to 200. Yeah, that looks good. If we keep resetting, you can see that the stars are going in random directions at random sort of speeds. That looks pretty good. Uh, you could try larger. I could say try a faster speed. Now 50 I suggest would be way too fast. Let's give it a go. 50 pixels per second. Whoa, it looks like we're traveling on the Death Star going at Mach 3 or whatever. Um, how about we put that back to 5. The speed is fine. The size, you could have different sizes. Let's try bigger sizes to say 3.5 instead of 1.5. Yeah, it look, doesn't look very good, I don't think. It looks like planets flying by. Well, although you could make it however, what do you, whichever size you wish. But otherwise, let me just load it up. That's our star field complete. Thank you for listening to this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll finish the series off next time with number three. I think next time I'll be doing some random uh, shifts of gradients and so, so forth on the planet. Okay, see you then. Bye.